How do you properly recycle? Can you recycle batteries? Is a book considered cardboard? What about an app? Recycling our wastes is fundamental. Citizens must insist on recycling as a way of life. When we talk about waste or plastic, it's funny because everyone always seems to gravitate towards recycling as the best solution. And it makes total sense. Recycling is an incredible process where you can make new stuff out of things that we've already created and disposed of. For example, you could take this aluminum can of Coke and turn it into a brand new can of Coke just through the sheer process of recycling it. And recycling is great. You limit the amount of pollution out there in the world. You reduce the amount of raw materials that need to be extracted from our planet. You use less energy and you're reducing the amount of greenhouse gas emissions which are being emitted, which helps tackle climate change. So recycling is great, but what's funny is that no one really knows how to properly recycle. But you don't know how it works? No, I don't. Do you know what New York City accepts in recycling? What, what oh. materials to recycle? No, I don't. Plastic bottle, after I finish, I throw it in one of those recycling bins. And that's all, about all I do, right? Right? That's all I do. So to really understand how to recycle, I did some research and interviewed the Deputy Commissioner of the New York City Department of Sanitation, Bridget Anderson, who has been working in recycling for 13 years. And this is my week's worth of recycling. I'm probably not the best example compared to the average American since I try to limit my waste as much as I can, but I still have a lot of very valuable recyclables. Things like the aluminum can, as you can probably tell from my addiction to Coke, cardboard, paper, some more aluminum for things like canned foods, cartons, glass, and occasionally I do use hard plastics for things that are hard to avoid like vitamins. But this is all very valuable stuff, except that when I bring this to the recycling room in my building, it's complete chaos. Let's see, that is dirty. That could potentially contaminate that entire bin. That goes to the trash. This is clean. This too. Plastic bags. That's not paper. In the paper bin. But that's not entirely my neighbor's fault. It's this system that's so complicated. For example, certain places recycle glass and some don't. And in certain cases, recycling just doesn't exist at all. It's today, a very common mistake in recycling is not knowing when you can recycle versus what you can't. And that's called wish cycling. 25% of the stuff that we try to recycle can't be recycled. And that's due to a lot of reasons. One, not everything is recyclable. Batteries, diapers, plastic bags, and tanglers are a big no. Two, your recyclables have to be clean. If you throw one thing that's dirty into your recycling bin, there's a good chance that that entire bin is not gonna get recycled and end up in landfill. For example, a pizza box, which is made out of cardboard, you would think is very recyclable and in high demand, but because of the grease that's left over, it's not recyclable. So it's very important that you clean whatever you put in your recycling bin before putting it in. There's a lot more that goes into recycling, but I'll let Bridget Anderson, the Deputy Commissioner of the New York City Department of Sanitation, go into the specifics. Hi, how are you? Thank you for taking the time to, to speak. Yeah, no problem. Do you have an, an idea of how much trash you're collecting? on a daily and Yeah, you... it's a lot. <laughs> so, um, close to 2,000 tons a day of recyclables and about 10,500 tons a day of refuse every single day. So if we have a day where we can't pick up, that means that 10,500 tons becomes 20, 21,000 tons, you know. Annually, it's about three and a half million tons of material. Wow, that's, that's incredible. What's a common mistake you think that New Yorkers do? We only capture 50% of recyclables in, in the recycling bin. So New Yorkers, there are various reasons why we still end up having a lot of recycling end up in the trash. Sometimes we live in a situation that's not conducive. And so part of what we push on is not just education, but also how do we retrofit buildings to make it easier to recycle? How do we train building staff to set up more safe, secure, well-lit recycling spaces? Maybe it has to be in the basement, but then make it well-lit, make it easy to find. And so what's something that can be done to you know, motivate New Yorkers to recycle more. Sometimes it's just knowing the numbers. Like people often are shocked that 50% of aluminum cans still end up in the trash. Think about keeping your home tidy. We want to keep the curb tidy too, so that it's clear when our guys go by that um, this is what I'm supposed to pick up in my truck. I'm on a metal glass plastic truck today. I want to find those items and quickly because I got to get through and traverse those 30,000 lane miles. 
So I, you know, I can't be picking through everything. And we keep them separate, mostly because it keeps the paper and cardboard much cleaner. And because we have a paper mill that actually takes the material on Staten Island, within New York City, Pratt Industries, they take the paper and they recycle it, turn it into new paper products right here in New York City. So it's this very nice story of, you know, you recycle your paper, it goes to a New York City business, it then turns it into new paper. And maybe it ends up back in your home again. Metal glass plastic, we co-mingle because you can't have too many bins. And we have a very state-of-the-art materials recycling facility, which is called a MRF, that separates it all out, bales the material and markets what it can. And not everything is marketable, so I'll say, you know, things that are problematic batteries, they cause fires in the facility. So take out batteries if you have batteries in anything. Tanglers, so wires, things that could tangle up in the equipment. They have an, a surprising a large collection of bowling balls. Somebody thinks that bowling balls are recyclable. <laughs> So uh, they don't want bowling balls. Film plastic is a big problem. Metal, you know, your aluminum, your ferrous metal, give us as much as you can. If anything you have is 50% or more metal, we want it, that's very high value on the market. And so we want that out of the trash, where we pay a lot more for it, into the recycling, where we can actually get revenue. And when it comes to the different types of plastic, I know that it gets a little confusing with the numbers mm -hmm. and the three arrows, but yep. what numbers are you accepting? So we, we have never used the numbers and it's okay. always confused people. The numbers are resin identification codes. They identify the type of plastic, but they don't actually identify the recyclability. What we've learned from other talking to other cities, you know, people come and they say, well, this doesn't have a number on it. Can I recycle it? And so we know through doing our waste characterization studies that 85 plus percent of plastic containers are ones, twos, and fives, which is what we want. But it is very confusing to have people have to become at little mini plastics experts and look for numbers. So we just say, give us all your rigid plastics. And the idea is that if we keep the message simple, we'll get more of the stuff we want. That is changing, however. I will tell you that as products change, more multi-layered material, pouches, flexible plastics and packaging, those are not recyclable at this point. And so that's very concerning to us because our messaging may not work anymore. You know, we have to think about, you know, how do we need to keep adjusting our, our messaging? What we've learned too, though, is that you, you don't want to have to retrain people. It's 2002, 2003, due to budgetary reasons, we canceled plastic and glass recycling for one year. Still to this day, we have people calling and saying, are you recycling plastics again? Wasn't that canceled? You know, like, so people have long memories. So there you go. If you live somewhere that offers recycling, there's no reason that you shouldn't be recycling. However, every location does it differently, so it's important that you rule how to recycle in your hometown to understand what you can recycle. In New York City, for example, the Department of Sanitation has made it very clear that they have a dual stream recycling system. The first bin is for paper and cardboard, and the second bin is for metal, glass, plastic, and carton. For more specific things like batteries, books, or lamps, there are certain drop-off sites for those specific items. For electronics, for example, you can drop those off at places like Best Buy or Staples or other electronic manufacturers. And if anything is 50% more metal, then just throw that in your metal glass plastic carton box because the Department of Sanitation will gladly recycle that. A lot of other cities around the world have a single stream recycling system, so you can throw everything in one specific bin, but just make sure to know exactly what you can put inside your recycling bin and make sure that it's clean and that you rinse it off of any food or grease before you put it in so that you avoid contamination. And if you don't have recycling where you live, then you can reach out to your elected officials and demand that they implement recycling. And I say this in every video, but the best thing that you can do is to reduce the amount of waste you use and to start consuming as if we don't recycle. Because companies need to be held accountable for their packaging especially when we're only recycling a fraction of the things we're producing. So there you go. I hope you found this video interesting and insightful. And if you did, please consider subscribing. Uh, stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one.